Hello everyone, welcome to Robo Printer. Today in this video I am going to show you how to configure STM32 Nucleo board GPIO ports as an output. So let's start. First we have to install the STM32 cube ID, then we have to go to file and then new and then let's create the STM32 project. Now you have to select your board from here. So my board is Nucleo. I will just write Nucleo, then I will write my board part number, which is F446RE. And I'll select this option, I'll select the board, and then I will do next. And here I will write my project name first project LED. And I will select empty option because in this video I'm going to show you how to use bare metal programming for writing the code and how to refer the data sheet and reference manual for accessing the different peripherals. So I will select empty and then I will do finish. So in this video, I'm going to show you one activity. I'm going to turn on onboard LED, which is connected on GPIO port. So first, let's check on which GPIO port my onboard LED is connected and on which pen it is connected. So for that, I will just open the user manual of my board. So on the user manual, you can see here PA5. So my LED is actually connected to GPIO port A pin number 5. Now I will come to the code and we are going to write the code in this source folder which is application layer and then I will just open main.c. We will be writing our code here. Here it is giving one warning. So how to get it out of this or that right click on your project and then go to properties go to MC setting and we are not going to use floating point unit so I will just click on this I will click on software implementation then I will click on apply and then yes apply and close that's it now that warning went off PIO A port on which bus it is hanging and what all of the registers are required to configure the GPIO A port as an output so first let me open the data sheet of this thing so i will open the data sheet of my microcontroller and then this is the memory map so you can see all the gpio ports are actually hanging to asp1 bus in order to use the gpio ports first we need to send the enable clock on the port then only you can use a new program so that thing is actually taken care by rcc register which means decident clock controls so using this peripheral you can enable the GPIO so in order to use all the GPIO port first you need to send the peripheral enabled clock by the RCC unit which means reset and clock control so here you can see RCC is also hanging on ASP1 bus so we are going to use GPIO port A this is also hanging on ASP1 bus and RCC clock is also hanging on this HP one bus. So first what we will do, we will load down all the base address of GPIO A port and RCC clock port. So let me open the reference manual, this is already open and first let me go to the memory mapping. So I will here, from here also you can go to the memory organization and here you can find the memory map. So first let's note down the GPIO A peripheral base address. So the base address of GPIO A peripheral is this one. So let's copy from here and let's come to the program. First we will note down all the base addresses of those peripheral which we are going to use in our program. So GPIO A base address. Then we need RCC base 
address. So what is the RCC unit base address? Again from the reference manual, it is also hanging on HB1 bus. So this is the base address of RCC unit. So copy from here, paste it here. Now first, we have to enable the GPIO A peripherals from HB1 ANR bus. That thing is actually taken care by RCC registers. So let's go to the RCC unit. So here RCC unit is there. And let's find the ASB1 ENR peripheral clock enable register. So ASB1 ENR peripheral clock enable register. Here is it. And now let's note down the opposite of this one. Let's write in the code. Offset of enable AH1 PENR 0x30 and let's come to the data sheet. So, so we are going to use GPIO A port, so we have to set this bit 1. In our program, we have to set this bit 1. Let's come to the code. Basically, this offset value we have to add in RCC address. So here with the base address, we have to add this value. Then it will enable the ASP1 peripherals. Now let's see the GPIO registers. For that, I will open the reference manual and I will just go in the GPIO registers. I will find here and here is the GPIO registers available. So first we have to set the mode of the pen. Uh, whether we are going to take an input or output. So we are going to take output from pin number 5. So we will be using model 5. And for setting the output, we have to set. So for setting the output, for setting. So for output in model 5, we have to reset the 11th bit and we have to set the 10th bit. Here you can see. So from the motor register, we have to send 0, 1 to motor 5. So basically, 11th bit will be 0 and 10th bit will be 1. So this is the offset value of motor register, which we will be adding with the GPIO A base address. So the base address of GPIO A is this one. So if I will add 0x00, it will not be changed. Now there is one more register which will be required for this activity so now we have to configure the output data register because we are going to choose output function gpio output data register the base address of this one is 0x14 and we have to send the data on fifth bit odr5 so let's note down the offset value and let's add this offset value with gpio a base address so ODR register will be base address of this one, base address of GPIOA plus offset 0x14. And this is the actually motor register. So I will cut from here. GPIOA motor register. 0x4002 base address plus 0x00 which will be 0x4002 this version that's it now let's create a pointer variable in order to assign all the addresses so first let's create the unsigned 32t and first i will create rcc register address Let's do typecasting because we are going to assign the addresses. So unsign 32t. So this is how you will do the typecasting because you are going to assign the address 0x. What is the base address of RCC? It's 4002 3830. 
so here in rcc we have to add the offset also so this is done now let's copy this thing let's paste again here we have to set this is motor register now what is the address of motor registers 0x4002 410c again let's paste and this is the odr register odr what is the address of odr it is 4002014 that's it we have assigned all the registers now first we have to enable the first bit from ASP1 ENR peripheral clock neighbor registers because we are going to use GPIA A port. I will show you again. So let me take you in the HP1 ENR peripheral clock neighbor registers. HP1 ENR clock enabled. So we have to set this bit one for that. Let's copy these things and this is done so we have set the first bit now now we have to send the data on the motor register so let's open the motor register from the RCC GPIO registers so we have to find the GPIO register and for setting the output mode, we have to clear this 11th bit and we have to set the 10th bit. 0 and 1 we have to send on model 5. So how to do that? Now let's clear the 11th bit and let's send the 10th bit. For that, I will just use AND function and then we will send 3 to the 10th bit with negation. This is how you can clear the bit. Now let's set the 10th bit. So for setting we will use R and then let's send 1 to 10th bit. This is set. Now we have to send the data on ODR, output data register. So we'll do in while 1. Let's copy this ODR register and then let's send one to the fifth bit because the LED is connected to EA5 and that's it now let's run the program now here it is asking the build configuration debug configuration just click on ok and run process is started and I'll just click on ok once it will be 100% the program will be now it gave one error. Let's see what is the error. The error is invalid operands to binary. So there were two problems. I have added this pointer before this P. So I have added this asterisk sign and I forgot to keep the equal sign. So I have added this also. Now let's run the program and let's click on OK. And once this will become 100%, my pin number 5th LED, which is connected on both, it will be turned on. 93, 87, and that's it. And here you can see the green LED is actually turned on. So the red one is actually power LED, and this one is the, here you can see that this LED is turned on which is connected on board. If you guys want to learn bare metal programming language for STM32 Nucleo board, visit www.roboprinter.com.